In this video, I'm going to tell you the seven steps my husband and I took to become pregnant this cycle. Thank you for watching everyone. My name is Susan and this is The Oslims. To give you a little bit of a background, I have been off of all birth control for three years and um, when we actually did start to try, we found that it was actually very difficult to become pregnant. But now I can happily say that I am 12 weeks pregnant with our very first baby and I have a list, a step-by-step -step guide of what we actually did to finally become pregnant. So I am very excited to share that with you guys. So first of all, there are two key factors that really play into if you are going to get pregnant or not. And those two factors are stress and timing. Stress causes 90% of all illnesses. So what happens when you are stressed out for a prolonged period of time? Your body produces stress hormones. And the more that your body is producing stress hormones, the less resources there are available for your body to produce other hormones, including the reproductive hormones. If you can balance out your stress levels, reduce your stress levels, your body will become more able to put resources into developing and building those reproductive hormones. The other really big key factor is timing. And this one's probably a little bit obvious, but I'm gonna get into it anyways. The average menstrual cycle for women is 28 days long. Within that cycle, you ovulate once, usually. That's sort of the normal thing. Sometimes you don't ovulate at all. But during a normal, healthy, regular cycle, you will ovulate one time. Ovulation is the release of your egg. Um, and the important thing to know here is that when the egg is released, the egg will only survive for 12 to 24 hours. After that 24 hours, your egg is pretty much useless. So the idea with timing here is that you only have 12 to 24 hours every 28 days in which you can become pregnant. So that is a very small window for us. And so timing is really everything. It's a very key component to getting pregnant. So how did me and my husband do it? How did we finally become pregnant? So the first year we weren't really trying, we were just sort of seeing what would happen. And after the first year, we decided to both get some tests done to see if our reproductive systems were working properly. And we found out that we were both completely healthy and normal, and really there should have been nothing that was really holding us back but still it took us three years. So what changed in our lives? What steps did we actually take to finally become pregnant after not being able to for three years? The first step we took, step one, was stress reduction. This step alone probably took us over a year to actually accomplish. Um, we were both in a stressful job situation, so we ended up quitting those jobs and starting new jobs. Um, ones where we were a lot less stressed out and actually were able to get our finances back on track. We also put a lot of work into our relationship, which really helped out a lot with reducing stress. I started to get really serious about de-stressing. I started doing meditations, self-hypnosis, subliminal affirmations. I just started doing as much as I possibly could. I got really serious about having less stress in my life. These processes and these steps also helped me build my confidence and just be happier all around. For me, becoming pregnant was a huge mental game. I had a lot of doubts about becoming a mother and about being worthy of becoming a mother. I had to deal with these mental issues in order to really allow my body to accept being pregnant. Step two for us was healthy eating. So we were never really unhealthy people, but we did try to um, increase our fertility through eating even healthier food and just increasing the amount of nutrients that we were getting. We both ended up becoming vegetarian and this act alone increased the amount of plants we were consuming uh, like an incredible amount. We got in contact with some local farmers. We started eating organic local produce and fresh farm eggs and even raw organic milk. 
I quit drinking alcohol, Vince doesn't drink at all, and I started taking prenatal su supplements very early on, way before I became pregnant. About three months before I actually became pregnant, I started tracking my diet just to make sure I was getting all the nutrients I needed. I just wanted to, to really assure myself that I was getting those nutrients. And when I started tracking my diet, I realized that I might not have been getting enough calories for the amount of physical activity that I was doing throughout my days. So three months before I became pregnant, I actually started to increase the amount of calories I was consuming through healthy foods, including a lot of like fats from nuts and seeds and things like that. And I think this increase in calories for me personally, because I might not have been getting enough calories, it really did help my body and, and help that fertilization. Step number three was herbal supplements. So I was planning on becoming pregnant. So for me, I didn't want to take as many herbal supplements. Um, there was one in particular that I did take, but any, any sort of out of the ordinary supplements, I would only take in the first half of my cycle where there was no chance that I was yet pr pregnant. And then the second half of my cycle, I would quit taking those herbal supplements altogether just because I didn't want to um, affect my body or, or, or change my body at all um, if I actually was pregnant because a lot of supplements can kind of, you don't really know the side effects of them. So the one supplement that I took and Vince took as well is called ashwagandha. It is an Ayurvedic supplement um, and I had heard about it from from a friend and I had also heard about it on YouTube as well and a lot of people were really recommending it for both men and women in order to uh, become pregnant. So ashwagandha is a is an adaptogen which is kind of the same as what a ginseng is. So an adaptogen helps your body deal with stress. So it's great at reducing the negative effects that stress can have on your body. The second herb is um, was only taken by my husband. Um, it is it should not be taken by women. I think under certain circumstances, women can take it, but definitely not if you're trying to become pregnant. I would not suggest it. Uh, but this herb is amazing for men. So it is called tribulus, and what tribulus does is it just increases the male's uh, sexual drive. I would definitely recommend not taking any of the tribulus that is targeted toward muscle builders because those can tend to have a lot of extra ingredients. If you just get the just strictly tribulus, nothing else added to it, it worked amazing for us. There have been studies done that show that tribulus does increase sex drive and and that is really, that is mainly what we noticed and it was, it was amazing at it. It did an amazing job of that. So step number four, so step number three was a couple of herbal supplements, but step number four is the exact opposite and that is avoiding any, um, any sort of strong alternative medicines. For me personally, this was something that I need, needed to be made more aware of. I am a strong advocate when it comes to using alternative medicines instead of Western medicines. Um, but in the case of when you are trying to become pregnant, and this is mainly for the female, uh, there are a lot of alternative medicines and simple, like healthy medicines that are great to use at any other time, but when you are pregnant, especially in the very, very early days of being pregnant, it can actually cause a miscarriage before you even know you're pregnant. So I cut out all, all essential oil extracts. These are known to be medicinal. Sometimes we think of them as just a pretty smell, but they can actually have very strong medicinal effects on your body. So they can increase your circulation. A lot of them can just cause miscarriages right away just because they're increasing your circulation. I also had to cut out things like oil of oregano, which I would use anytime that I had a little bit of a sore throat, but actually oil of oregano is extremely medicinal as well and can cause contractions. Just really any sort of, any sort of certain like strange supplements, anything that's not just very basic and very, very ordinary supplements. So I still took my prenatal and I took some other, you know, um, multivitamins. 
but I stayed away from any other herbal supplements, especially in that the last two weeks of my cycle when there's a chance that I could have conceived. So step number five was tracking my cycles. So I, I, I had always tracked my period, so I knew when my period was coming. I knew how long the length of my cycle was. Um, but the big thing that I didn't know about my cycle was ovulation. So the first thing I did to make it a little bit easier on myself is instead of tracking my cycle on a calendar that I would only have at home, I started tracking my cycle on, a, on my phone with an app. So the app that I used is called Clue, and I've heard about this app from a lot of other YouTubers too, the ones that were trying to conceive, and it seemed like it was a very popular one, so that's what I started using, and I really liked it. The thing with the Clue app as well is that it'll also give you sort of an estimated range of when you're probably ovulating on, on your cycle. So it's probably about a five day range. So that was kind of helpful as well. But even with that range that it sort of gave us, it was five days long and the range was just a calculation. It wasn't really personalized to me. It, it, there was no way that it would be able to tell if it was actually when I personally was ovulating. So what we had to do next was actually figure out when I personally was ovulating. So then a couple months before, um, before we got pregnant, we started using, or I started using, an ovulation kit. So I actually tried two different ones. Um, the first one that I tried, I really didn't like, it didn't work for us. And the second one that we tried was amazing and it actually worked on kind of the first try in, co in combination with all of these other things that we were doing, especially the tribulus. So the first ovulation kit that I tried was, I'm pretty sure it was by First Response. So this was actually a more expensive ovulation kit. And I think it was more expensive because it had a digital readout, um, but we actually didn't like that kit. And the reason why is that it would only tell you on the exact day that you were ovulating. Um, by the time that you were actually ovulating, when this when this kit was telling us that we were ovulating, by that time it's pretty much too late. So the second kit that we tried is by a company called Clear Blue, and this specific test that we tried, it would tell you about two to four days before you were ovulating. So the Clear Blue test will tell you when you should start trying before you even ovulate. So that was extremely helpful. So that was step five, checking, um, tracking my ovulation. So once we started tracking the ovulation, then, then things became a lot more simple. But that leads us to step six, which was actually having sex on the right days. Um, so the tribulus helped us extremely for this one because it increased my husband's sexual drive. What we ended up doing was five days in a row. So three days, starting three days before I ovulated, and I knew what those days were due to the clear blue uh, ovulation kit and up to one day after I ovulated. The egg can survive for up to 24 hours, so we just wanted to make sure we got every single day. To get into a little bit more detail about what, um, how this actually works, the egg only lasts for 12 to 24 hours, but your partner's sperm will survive in your reproductive system for up to three days. So the idea is that you kind of want to have a buildup of sperm inside your uterus, sort of just sitting there waiting for the egg to be released. So that as soon as the egg is released, that sperm can just just fertilize it right as way away. So that is why it's so important to actually um, have intercourse before you even ovulate. So that was the setup that worked for us for the time that we actually became pregnant. And it was that was the only time that we actually tried this, five days in a row, three days before ovulation, and every single day until a day after. That was the only time that we actually tried that schedule. We were dedicated to it, and, and that was the time that we actually became pregnant. So it, it seriously does work. It's all about timing and consistency and knowing your cycle, knowing your ovulation. So for us, there was one more step that, that we also took. 
Step number seven is for me, waiting and relaxing. And what I mean by that is, so after we would have sex or intercourse, whatever you want to call it, I would lay there for at least 10 minutes. Um, a lot of the time I would take a pillow or two and prop up my hips um, because de kind of depending on your body type that will sort of help the sperm flow up into your uterus where you want it to be. I feel like if I was to stand up right away then basically everything would just come out. So that was a huge step for us for me just to lay down and wait for at least 10 minutes. I'm not sure if um, propping my hips up actually made that much of a difference but I do believe that laying down for an amount of time really did help. And that was about it. That was the seven steps that we took to become pregnant this month. Uh, just to kind of give you guys a little bit more information, um, as I said, the first part, the first step that we did was stress reduction, the second part was healthy eating, and these steps did take quite a while. The stress reduction probably took a year, and the healthy eating um, probably took, you know, maybe three months where I was getting my diet sort of on track with enough calories and things like that. But I believe... I know a lot of people just want to know, like, how do I get pregnant right now? How do I get pregnant fast this cycle? That's what I want to know. I don't want to wait any longer than that. Uh, but I feel like having a baby is a lifelong commitment. And I really feel like in order to sort of just reduce your stress right now, just plan for the conception to take a little bit longer so you're not stressing like I didn't get it this month like why not I feel like a failure you know it's gonna take a little bit of a time and I think that it's good it's good to work on yourself to work on those mental issues that you might have right now whether it's <clears throat> whether it's stress or whether it's personal doubts about being a parent as it was for me or whatever it is I think it's very important for you to work on those now even while you're trying to conceive um, because having a baby is it's gonna it's gonna be a lifetime so whether whether you have whether you conceive that baby right now or you conceive that baby in three months after you've been eating healthier or whether you can see that baby after a year of working on yourself and working on your mental health um, the baby's still going to be with you, so whether you delay it by, you know, three months or a year, or if you have it right now, it's not, it's really not going to be a huge deal. I do know how hard it can be to try to conceive and, um, you know, finding out every single month that you got your period again, and I know that can be so distressing and so, so frustrating. Um, but but really it, it'll come you know as as long as you guys are both healthy and you're working on your mental health it will come um, but just make sure your happiness is coming first and really be easy on yourself it's so easy to feel like like not conceiving is somehow your fault or that you're somehow a failure or something like that but uh, but really be easy on yourself and know that there are so many people struggling with this. Even people who are perfectly healthy, like me and my husband were, we're we have no, no problems at all and it still took us three years to actually become pregnant. So know that we, we have gone through it all as well um, and it will come for you eventually. And yeah, I just wish you guys all the best. And yeah, the most important message is just be easy on yourself. You're trying the best you can. You're not a failure and you're not, you're, you're not messing it up. You're doing the best you can too, right? So uh, anyways, thank you very much guys for listening. As I said, this is the Oslims and we love to have you guys here subscribing and listening to our little videos every week. So please subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. I will talk to you later. Thank you so much for watching.